Father, Lord Jesus, we love you. We thank you for your goodness, your grace, your mercy. Father, allowing us to be in the house of God today with God's people and the sweet Holy Ghost of God, we already feel you in the place today. Thank you, Lord, for visiting with us already. Thank you, dear Father, for touching us one more time this side of heaven already this morning before we even get to any preaching or any other music today. Thank you, Lord, your presence. We feel your presence today. And Father, that any ones here, God, today that don't know you in their free pardon of sin. Father, today I pray, God, that you'd wrap your arms around them, bring them to an old-fashioned all repentance before it's everlasting too late, Lord Jesus. And the ones that may have come our way, God, that may be discouraged along the way. Father, I pray, God, that you'd bring the peace that passes all understanding to them. Now, Father, I pray for the preaching hour or the songs of Zion anointed from on high. Now, Father, I pray, God, today, God, that you'd continue to visit with us all through the service and all through the remainder of this day. And Father, we love you and thank you for your goodness and your grace. In Christ's name we pray and the people of God said, Amen. Amen. Give the Lord the greatest hand clap of praise as you be seated all over the place. I have something to shout about. How about you? Can I get a witness in the building?
that and then some more. Amen. Uh, I'm thankful to go to a church that's not the first frigidaire. Amen. Uh, <laughs> I'm glad that somebody if somebody ever were to die in the service, they wouldn't have to uh, carry out half the church before they figured out who it was. Bye, bye, bye. <laughs> what a joy it is to be in the house of the Lord. Thank you for coming to church. And you say, Preacher, I just don't know about uh, acting all like that. Well, when, when the Tar Heels won, how'd we act? Amen. <laughs> I would say when Duke won, but uh, we don't want to mess up the spirit. Amen. Uh, hallelujah. We got some Duke fans in here, and on the Lord, we'll have altar call here in just a little while. Uh, thank you for coming to church today. We're looking forward to what the Lord's going to do. And what a good crowd uh, we have today, and we appreciate you. Yeah. Thank you uh, for coming to church and making it a priority. What a great way to start your week to be in the house of God. And uh, we're just going to. Uh, we might as well go to church. If we came to church, we might as well go to church. There's a whole lot of difference uh, in just go, just being at church than going to church. Amen. And by the time this thing's over, I hope you understand all that. Amen. All right. Uh, let's do this uh, this morning. Uh, we're going to just have two minutes. Uh, two minutes this time. Uh, two minutes. Uh, I gave them one minute last time, and they just cut it off. And so... Uh, Two minutes. I want you to stand up with, uh, all over the room there, if you will. Uh, take two minutes. Get to somebody. Tell them you're glad to see them in the house of the Lord. Good to see you. song for us. It says it's under the blood. Aren't you thankful that Jesus uh, got some stuff under the blood? Uh, you can have a seat while they sing.
you thankful for the blood of Jesus? Somebody give him another praise today.
scriptures now. Uh, these folk right here have uh, they helped me uh, to keep us going. Uh, we've been somewhat slow to open things back up. Uh, maybe more so than some of you would have, would have liked, and maybe less so than others. Uh, but by God's grace, uh, we've not had any. We didn't lose anybody during COVID. God kept us safe, and there's some of you uh, got it. Most of us probably at some point in time, and He He brought us out of it, and we thank the Lord for that. Amen. Amen. And, uh, while you're standing, those of you that want to uh, come and be part of our choir. Uh, we're going to do a couple songs. You'll know them. They'll be on the back. So come on up. Just make your way. Just come up those side steps and come as far over this way as you can. Uh, come on. We need some men up, up in here. There you go. Just men on the back uh, row and ladies on the front row. We'll do it that way to begin with. And if you can't carry a tune in a bucket, just say watermelon, watermelon, watermelon. <laughs>
This song says, if you knew him, like I know. Now, when I was a little boy, I heard about him. I knew the name. I knew that there was a book in our house that had a picture, and that was a Bible, and that picture was supposed to be Jesus. I knew a little bit about him, but it wasn't until... April 2nd, 1989, I got under good old Holy Ghost conviction, yeah. and I got born again by the grace of God. I got washed by the, Ooh. hallelujah, I got washed in the blood, and I found out about him. He, he's good and good. He's better than I ever thought he could be. If you just do it, I believe you'd worship it. Listen to this this
wonderful, wonderful. Stand with us, if you will, choir. Thank you so much. Uh, we will certainly uh, make that uh, more of a habit, and uh, uh, we're going to have to figure out uh, some practice times and make all that happen. Uh, wasn't that good? Praise Amen. the Lord. Amen. Amen. If you have your Bible this morning, turn and find the book of Psalms. Uh, the book of Psalms, while they're making their way, uh, the children are going to go next door for our children's ministry. Um, Tanya is helping them out today, and so if you uh, please be sure uh, to pick up your children after church, we would certainly and do certainly appreciate that. Uh, Psalm 40 and verse number 1, just a few verses this morning, Psalm 40 and verse 1, and we're going to see what the Lord has for us here today. <laughs> Psalm 40 and verse, amen. I love hearing those kids just run up and down. And I, I, y'all, I, I'm serious. Because there was a time there wasn't no kids for something. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Psalm 40 and verse number one. The Bible said, I waited patiently for the Lord. And he inclined unto me. And heard my cry. He brought me up also out of an horrible pit, out of the miry clay. I mean, it's one thing to have to get the dry red clay, but it's a whole different story when you're in the miry clay. Out of the miry clay and set my feet upon a rock and establish my goings. And he hath put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our God. Many shall see it and fear and shall trust in the Lord. Blessed is that man that maketh the Lord his trust and respecteth not the proud nor to, uh, such as turn aside to lies. Many, O oh Lord, my God, are thy wonderful works, which thou hast done, and thy thoughts, which are to usward. They cannot be reckoned up in order unto thee. If I would declare and speak of them, they are more than can be numbered. I want to call your attention back there to verse number two where the psalmist said that he as he cried to the Lord uh, the Lord brought him out of the pit and then the Bible said not only did he bring him out of the pit and establish his go and set him on the rock but the Bible said he hath put a new song in his mouth I want to preach for a little while on that thought We've got a song when it all goes wrong. We've got a song even when it all goes wrong. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray God for the next little while. I ask you, God, that you'd make preaching easy for us. I ask you, God, that you would move uh, and uh, help and bless in our hearts and lives. I thank you, God, for all that you have done and, Lord, what you're going to do in this place in this hour. Uh, Lord, we no doubt there are folk in here that uh, have difficulties. No, no doubt there are folk in here uh, that have came broken. And Lord, they they don't really know how to handle the problem that's uh, that's handling them. Uh, but Lord, I'm thankful that you're a God uh, that is able. You're a God that can. You're a God that does. And Lord, have your will and have your way in all that's said and all that's done. I'll thank you. We'll thank you. We'll bless you. Ask in Jesus' name. God's people say it. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. As we look here in Psalm 40, it's a very familiar uh, psalm, uh, one of the psalms of David. And uh, if you read through the book of Psalms, you'll find out that David's a lot like you and David's a lot like me in the fact that some days he's up and some days he's down. Some days things are going right and some days it seems like things are everything's going wrong. 
Uh, and we uh, look at those and we uh, uh, begin to uh, think about those. And if you remember, the book of Psalms is a book of songs. It's the song book of the Bible. And uh, we don't generally sing uh, the Psalms the way that they did, uh, the, that the Jews did. If you've ever heard that done, it's very interesting to listen to, and I enjoy it. Uh, it's just not the style necessarily that we do. However, there's a lot of songs that uh, come right out of the book of Psalms, right out of uh, one of them, uh, that uh, one choir that I know sings this song, uh, says, uh, out of Psalm 23, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Aren't you thankful uh, that you can go to the Word of God when all this world is wrong and it seems like you open up the newspaper and all the headlines are bad and all the headlines are, are down. Aren't you thankful uh, that you can go to the Word of God and find help and encouragement in our times of need? Amen. The reason I say that is because sometimes you got to sing when you don't feel like so, I heard a story years ago. Uh, Ralph Sexton Jr. told that he was at the hospital with his dad, and uh, his dad was uh, getting pretty advanced in his sickness. His wife, uh, for most of their marriage, uh, she was uh, sick. And at that time, his dad and his wife are both in the hospital there in Asheville. And he'd been up all night over there at the hospital trying to, to pastor, trying to, to, to be a husband, trying to be the son, and all that. And uh, he said he's just kind of tired, and uh, he thought he'd step outside and catch a little fresh air, maybe uh, re rejuvenate him just a little bit. He said it was way on up in the night, probably uh, three or so in the morning, four. And... Uh, as he stepped out there, the ambulances were coming in uh, to the circle there and all that, and there's, you know, traffic was going on. And he kept hearing this sound, the unmistakable sound of a bird singing. And he thought, it's the middle of the night. Why is that bird singing? And God said, though weeping may endure for a night, joy cometh in the morning. That bird knew it might be night now, but that sun's going to come up in just a little while. I'm here to tell you, child of God, you might feel like everything's wrong and you don't have a song, but take a lesson from that little old bird. It might be awful dark right now, but the sun will come up again. The sun will shine again. I believe every one of us in this room can sing a song even when everything goes wrong by remembering these verses. Y'all see what I did there? Verses. Psalms have verses. The Bible has verses. I'll be here all week. Don't worry. <laughs> Look with me, if you will. Just a little preacher humor. Uh, Y'all humor the preacher. Uh, verse number one. I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined unto me and heard my cry. He brought me up also, or brought me up also out of an horrible pit, out of a miry clay. If I want to rejoice, and I Sometimes you got to encourage yourself in the Lord. Amen. Uh, there's times that nobody else is going to do it. There's times the worship team and the choir won't be here to sing for you. Uh, you're just going to have to learn to sing all by yourself. Somebody help me now. Amen. <laughs> I've found some of my best singing is all by myself because ain't nobody can tell me I'm off key. Hallelujah. Ah, <laughs> uh, that David, there it was. And, uh, he was in a mess and he was in a fix uh, and he began to uh, call out on the Lord uh, and the Bible said that God listened to him. God came to where he was 
because of that. So there was a cry. Verse number one said this. It said, he inclined unto me and heard my cry. I, I thank God uh, for Momo and Papa. Thank God for Mom and Daddy that will pray over you. I thank God for people that will lock arms beside you uh, and pray alongside you. Uh, but there's sometimes uh, you just got to get to God uh, all by yourself. Uh, sometimes you got to learn. Uh, I've got to call out on God. Uh, ain't nobody going to do it for me. Uh, I've come boldly uh, to the throne of grace uh, all by myself. Uh, and here I am. Uh, God, hear my cry. The place he sought me because of that cry and because of his condition. Notice verse 2 said, He brought me up also out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay. There are times that we find ourselves in horrible. I mean, it's bad enough to be in a pit, ain't it? But then there's sometimes we're in a horrible it reminds me of Jeremiah chapter 20. They had locked Jeremiah up for doing nothing more than what God had told him to. He was preaching God's word. He was doing uh, what God wanted him to. He was right smack dab in the middle of God, God's will, and they locked him up and put him in the pit. And that pit wasn't just a, a, a miry clay pit. It was basically the sewage. There he was in the middle of all that. No doubt, old Satan come and whisper, don't, ain't it just like old Slewfoot to find you when you're down and kick you some more, yeah. to find you when you're down and say, where's your God at now? Where's that God that you're singing about on the mountain? Where's he at now? Yeah. Let me just pause right here. If you're one of those folks that like to go kick your brother and your sister while they down, Guess whose work you're doing? Uh, there's Jeremiah. And he is down there in that pit. And he's listening to those whispers. And he says it like this. He said, I'm not going to speak anymore in your name. I'm not going to preach anymore. I'm done with all of it. And the very next verse I mean, it didn't go to the next chapter. The next verse said, but there was a fire down in my bones. It was shut up in my bones. And I could not speak quiet. I couldn't quit. I'm glad, hallelujah, God put something down on the inside of me. Back in 1989, I've been not been able to give up. I've not been able to quit and just tell the truth. I don't want to. He's been too good for far too long for me to go back there. I uh, read a story about a little a preacher that had gone uh, to a new town. And he, uh, his goal was to go and visit all the houses around the church there. And he was making his way through. One, I believe it was a Saturday afternoon, and he come up on this house. And, uh, he uh, walked up, and this man was out there on his porch and had his hose pipe. Y'all know what a hose pipe is. I, I know what I'm talking about. Garden hose. Around here is hose pipe, people. We drank out of hose pipes. It ain't died yet, either. <laughs> but he, he had his hose pipe out. And he's squirting around. His little dog was uh, running around, and the water hit that dog. And man, that dog went to cutting a fit and carrying on like you ain't never heard. And that preacher said, "What in the world is wrong with that dog?" He said, "Oh, preacher." He said, "It wasn't too long ago. He was just a little old puppy. Me and my dad was out here doing some work. My septic tank had backed up, and we didn't have the money." to get it pumped and all that, so we had to do it. We dug it up ourselves, And uh, we had the top of that thing open, and uh, that we had that little puppy, and about that time, a rabbit took off around, across the yard. And that little puppy just did what puppies do, and he took off after that rabbit. He didn't realize there's a big hole, and he landed down in the bottom 
of that sepulcher in that nastiness. And my daddy looked at me and said, son, he's yours. You want him, you're going to have to go out. He said, preacher, I got a ladder and I climbed down into that sepulcher. I picked that puppy up. I, I carried him out and I washed him off. And I got all that muck and that mire off of him. And ever since then, every time I get the hose pipe out and he hits him, he remembers where he was. He remembers what happened to him. Hey, hey, child of God, there was a time that you and I had fell down in the muck and in the mire, and God the Father said, God the Son said, they're yours. If you want them, you can have them. Hey, hey, you're going to have to go and get them. And he climbed down and picked us up. And what I said, glory to God, I remember where he saw me. Let me ask you this. Where were you when God came and found you? Stan, you told me your testimony. Aren't you thankful that God didn't just leave you on that couch trying to watch that racing channel? Aren't you glad that God will reach down further than you can reach up? Some of you ought to be in jail. All of us ought to be in hell. But God's amazing grace came by. I say hallelujah for the place he saw. Not only if I want to stir my spirit, when I get low and I get down, I, I start thinking about the verse that reminds me of where he sought me. But it also, I think about the verse of the position that he secured for me. Look at verse 2. He brought me up also out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock. And set my feet upon a rock. Now, there's something about being stuck in the mud that you just can't get any traction, and you just can't get sure-footed standing. That you just stuck in it. That seems like John and Jay's got a story. I'll talk to y'all after a while. I'll use it as a sermon illustration one day. Amen. I, I'll tell you what happened to me. I was reading meters one time. And uh, I used to, y'all ain't going to believe this, but I used to eat and walk about 8 or 10 miles a day. 8 or 10 miles a day. But I ate enough to get my calorie up uh, and so, and so I wouldn't pass out. Amen. <laughs> but I, I, I did. I, I, I was reading meters. And I'll never forget in the morning, we put on these galoshes, these little shoe covers. So you boots didn't get wet from the dew and all that stuff. Well, I was in York, South Carolina, and I was behind some, uh, somebody's trailer. And uh, apparently they had a sewage problem. I didn't know about it. And I stepped down as I was going through their yard to read the meter and go to the next one. My boot went down, my foot came up, my boot was still stuck in the ground. I said, what in the world am I going to do? Ever so gingerly, I put up my foot and fished it back down into that boot and got out just as quickly as I could. But it's good to have somewhere solid to stand. I'm thankful in this world of wavering, there is a solid place to stay. I'm thankful for some folk that still gather around the house of God and still believe that God, what God had to say is right and we're going to stand on that book and we're going to believe his word. Somebody help me now. He secured that position by his power. The Bible said he brought me up out of a horrible pit. Can't you just see that great big hand reaching down, snatching him out, picking him up? I, uh, you've had situations, I've had situations where somebody, they tried their best. They did everything they could, but they could not fix your problem. They couldn't. There's some of you that even today have bouts with depression, bouts with anxiety, bouts with all that stuff, and people try their very best to help you and to pull you out of it, 
that they can't get you wrong. But I'm thankful to tell you there's a God in heaven that knows exactly where you're at. There's a God in heaven that can bring you out. Not only that, says he set my feet on upon a rock. That placement where he has put you and where he has put me. I, I'll tell you this story and give you this last point here. Um, 1992, there was an election going on. And uh, I was almost old enough to vote for my first time, but uh, I turned uh, 18 um, that next year, I think it was. And so I, I missed out on, on that, but I, I, I was all into the politics of it all. I remember uh, debating with a boy in fourth grade about how Reagan was the superior choice over Mondale. And I still believe that, by the way. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Lord, tell me. Ah, some of you getting all mad. I'll tell you. <laughs> but I remember that I, uh, by this time, I, I had got to know a couple people. I went to this thing. I forget what, some young leadership thing. And I met a councilman at the time. and I, Or he may have been the mayor. I know he served as mayor as well. But his name was Porter McAtee. And that probably don't mean a whole lot to y'all, but back then, I, I dropped that name quick. I said, I walked up to the Republican uh, headquarters, and I said, I'm here to see Porter McAteer, please. <laughs> High school student. <laughs> I, I've got an appointment with Porter. Well, he's not here right now. Well, if you... <laughs> What I'm here for is get some tickets to go to that train stop, whistle stop tour that the president's coming through. Oh, we didn't realize that. Here's your tickets, sir. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I had tickets. I, this, this still convicts me to this day. And I know he's looking at me burning, uh, burning holes through me right now. I had to, whoever I wanted to take, I could take up to the front of the line. And our whole, the whole town, I mean, they let schools out and everything. Everybody went to Ramlow, right there where you used to work, Raymond, at that uh, baking place. They had secret service agents up on top of them big towers uh, with uh, sharpshooters, uh, snipers, and everything else. Uh, the president was coming to town. I had my ticket. And I went through general admission. I went through the box seats. And I went right up front. They had these bleachers right beside uh, where the, uh, the train track was. And whoever I wanted, I took with me. And I, I'm sorry, but I did not take my brother. And uh, <laughs> that's what siblings do sometimes. He was back. He's back around Rex meal number three, way back yonder. And, and I was right there. Uh, I mean, I was waving at the old 41. Me and him was giving thumbs up. <laughs> way to be prudent, way to be prudent, this juncture. Y'all don't even remember it, do you? All right. <laughs> so, there I was in a position somebody else had put me in. I'm thankful. In 2022, I'm not standing here by myself. I'm not standing here all alone. The only reason I am where I am, the only reason you are where you are, is there's a God that puts you where you're at. Amen. There's a God that places you where you're at. We would have fell a long time ago. We would have slipped and fell a long time ago had it not been for a mighty, mighty big God. Had it not been for a place we could stand. Amen. Let me ask you this and I'll be done. Are you secure? in the position he has put you in. Oh, you might be slipping around and sliding around. It might be the reason is that you climbed up to that position yourself and you can't stay there yourself. But if you'll let God put you where you're supposed to be, you won't have to worry about being sure-footed or not. 
you'll be standing on the rock that God's given you. Here's, uh, here's this last one. Look in verse number two and in verse number five. Go if you want to come. The Bible said he set my feet upon a rock and established my goings. There's a direction that comes from serving the Lord. There's a direction found in his purpose. God sees in you, God sees in me what we do not see in ourselves. God said, I've got a place you're going to, and I'm going to get you there. He picked us up, put us on the right path, and said, this is the direction. He set my feet upon a rock and established my goings. Get out of the mire. Get out of this place. You're going to something better. You're going to something bigger. You're going to something more fruitful in your life. But not only that, verse 5 said, Many, O Lord, my God, are thy wonderful works which thou hast done. And thy thoughts, which are to usward, they cannot be reckoned up in order unto thee. Not only do we find his direction, we see his devotion. God is devoted to you. And God is devoted to me. He's not going to give up on us. He's not done with us. Aren't you thankful when things fall apart? That God doesn't just say, I'm done. It's over. I can't work with you anymore. No, no. Uh, he told Jeremiah, he said, go down to the potter's house and learn a lesson there. He said, you see how that, that uh, pottery, uh, that, that clay uh, is marred in the hand of the potter? He didn't throw it away. Uh, he just keeps on working on it. He starts over and over and over again if he has to. Uh, I've learned that God will not give up on you. I uh, heard about a little old boy was over at his grandma's house. Grandma was making a quilt. And the little boy was just meandering around and playing around and doing what little boys do. He's crawling around on the floor and got up and under that quilt. And on the other side of that quilt, man, there was strings hanging down and there was all kinds of mess underneath there and he, he knew his grandma made wonderful stuff he said mama what's wrong with this quilt what do you mean honey and he said look at it look under here so she re raised it up sure enough strings is hanging everywhere all kinds of tattered pieces here and there and she said, oh, honey, you're not looking at it from my point of view. She turned it over. It was a beautiful quilt with all the embroidery just right. Uh, she had not missed a stitch. Everything was just exactly where it was supposed to be on her side. Sometimes we look at things and they're all in a mess. They're all messed up because we're looking at them from our side. But oh, if you could just see it from heaven's point of view. Oh, if you could just see it from my father's point of view. A purpose he has for you and I. I want you to stand with me. I wonder this morning. Have we asked ourselves, what is it that God thinks about us? What is it that God has planned for us? I mean, Jay, have you, did it ever cross your mind that you'd grow up and learn how to mess around with electricity? You'd grow up and learn how to do some plumbing, stuff like that? And that's good, that's fine. But God had a whole lot more in mind than that. He said, I'm going to put you in path with people that are broken. I'll put you in people's houses whose the house is falling apart. Their marriage is falling apart. Everything's going wrong. 
and I'm going to put you in there so you can speak life into it. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad that God's got a purpose bigger than we see? Earl, when you was working on that air conditioning and all that kind of stuff, you went into all kinds of situations, uh, uh, places you couldn't go when you was having a pulpit, places you couldn't go uh, when you was at a church house, uh, but you went into their house, uh, and God gave you purpose far beyond what you could have ever imagined. I want you to do this. I want us all to do this. If God has given us the song, or maybe you're struggling to sing that song. I wonder how many of us come together around these altars and say, God, I want to thank you for the verse you gave me to sing. Here we come. Lord, I want to thank you for the stanza, for the chorus that I can sing and make melody in my heart. Lord, I want to ask you to help me. God, I'm struggling on this verse. I'm struggling with this part of the song. There's a song that you and I can sing. Even when your whole world has gone wrong, God still got a song. While these are praying, these are asking God for help and for encouragement. You're here this morning to say, Preacher, Preacher, I know I'm saved, but I'm struggling an awful lot to sing my verse. I need God's help where I'm at in my life right now. How many of us just be honest, throw our hand up? Here's my hand, Preacher. We see those, we see those, we see those. Thank you. Many. Here's my hand. Would you help me pray? I want to sing again. I want for God to hear me sing one more time. I want for my family to know that there's something worth singing about one more time. Maybe you're here this morning. You do not know the free pardon of sin. You do not know the song I'm talking about. See, there is a song in the book of Revelation that only the redeemed could sing. The angels had to stand to them and stand the back while the redeemed sang that song of sweet deliverance. Some of you right now, you cannot go to back to a place and to a time where Jesus Christ came into your heart. The blood was applied. Your sins were washed away. You were made new, a brand new creature in Christ. Preacher, I, that has not happened to me, but I need it. With heads bowed and eyes closed, would you slip your hand up, preacher? I do not know for sure that I'm saved. I do not know for sure that I'm ready to meet God like I am. Here's my hand. Here's my hand, preacher. We're looking. Here, I'm not going to come to you, embarrass you, call you out, but I'm going to pray for you. Preacher, here's my hand. Please pray for me. I need Christ in my life. You see that? I need the Lord. I need to be saved. I've never been born again. And I'm afraid if I were to go home right now, if Jesus comes back, I do not know that I'm ready to meet God. Here's my hand. Some slip their hands up. I'm going to pray a prayer in just a moment. The, the words I say will not do one thing for you, except that they be your words, and if this be your prayer. If you'll pray a prayer like this and mean in your heart, the Bible said, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Dear Jesus, Pray with me. Dear Jesus, forgive me. Come into my heart. Change me. Wash me. I believe that you love me. I believe you died for me. I believe you rose victorious over death, hell, and the grave. 
Jesus, I need you in my heart. I need you in my life. Make me new. Make me whole. Save me. In Jesus' name. With heads bowed and eyes closed. If you prayed a prayer like that, and you meant in your heart, and you know that God's doing something in your heart right now, won't you raise that hand? Preacher, I prayed that there's one. Is there more? Preacher, I prayed that prayer. There's two. Are there more? Preacher, I prayed that prayer. And I asked the Lord to be my Savior today. Here's my hand. Don't be ashamed of him. The Bible said, if you're ashamed of me before this wicked and perverse generation, I'll be ashamed of you before my Father. I certainly want him to be proud of me. Here's my hand, preacher. I ask the Lord to be my Savior and my Lord. Is there something? Is there another? With heads bowed and eyes closed, you raised your hand or perhaps you didn't. But God's dealing with you and you need peace in your life. You need to make a stand right now about this thing of salvation. I want you to step out and come and join me down here at the altar. I myself or someone else will come and pray with you. I re you raised your hand. Here's my hand. Preacher, I'm going to do something about this. I'm going to nail it down today. I'm going home differently than I came. Here's my hand. Somebody like that. Come on. I'm not going to drag you, and I won't come to you. Preacher, I need Christ. Don't you dare leave. Not knowing him. You may never make it home. Jesus can change your life today. I gotta go home and fix this. I gotta go home and fix no. No. God can fix all that. You just go ahead and get it fixed up with him right now. Just a moment longer, preacher. I need to be saved. Slip out of that seat. Come on. Don't listen to the devil one more day. One more Sunday. Preacher, I need it. Come on. You grip at the back of that pew. God's calling you. Today is the day of salvation. Now is the accepted time. That's the word of God. While God's drawing you, while God's dealing with you, you come. Father, in Jesus' name, I've done all that I can. Lord, I, I know anything of lasting significance will only be done by you anyway. Lord, I pray God right now, Lord, you'd speak to the hearts and lives of your children. God, I pray for these that you're dealing with. I pray, God, for mercy. I pray, God, that you continue to deal with them and draw them. Lord, before they even leave this property, I pray, God, they find somebody and make peace. They find out that there's a friend that sticks closer than a brother. Thank you, God, for who you are and what you do. We love you and bless you. We ask these things in Jesus' name. God's people say Amen. 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 You can be seated in just a moment. Uh, some of the ladies have uh, worked on something and uh, Shannon I think is going to say a little thing and present something to you. Really, our blessing, and know this is a time on us to 
like you have used it all to me. And may your helping hand be always there for us. For you always try to be that faithful friend. Thank you for caring for us, praying for us, and being the source of inspiration and encouragement. Your daily walk with the Lord and devotion to God are reflected in what you do. May God bless you for the example you are. And the love and compassion you have for the children and teens of this church to touch their lives, to set the faith you pray for them so God can reach them. Pray that you do special events we have at the church, the Christian Bible School, the plays, the Easter, and Christmas, and lives. I know all these and much more mean so much to you. And it shows and shines We appreciate you, we pray for you, and we love you. And we thank God you're a pastor's wife. Amen. I thank God she's our pastor's wife as well. <laughs> Amen. Uh, all, all right. Uh, do you want to say anything? No? All right. I didn't think so. Uh, just go back to the back. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Praise the Lord. It looks like there's some beef jerky in there. <laughs> Hallelujah. We appreciate that. Thank you uh, to all that uh, did that. We do. Uh, I promise you this uh, there wouldn't be a pastor anywhere that's worth anything. Don't have a good friend to watch it. <laughs> Second best thing ever happened to me is Jenny. Uh, the first best thing is when I got saved. Amen. And she is the next best thing a person and just a priceless gift, and I thank the Lord for her. And uh, fellas, I hope uh, you can say the same about yours. Uh, yeah. Amen. God's been good to us. I can look at them and look at you, and I tell you, God's been good to you, fella. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Wayne, God's been good to you, buddy. Glenn, God was real good to you. Amen. Yeah. All right. I'm getting in trouble now. Uh, let's, uh, on the way out, let's give. Uh, we do have some slips uh, that are available uh, if you wanted to give toward. Uh, that um, church plant uh, that we that we did last week, and some of you, uh, you can if you didn't bring it back, uh, you can go ahead and fill that out and drop it in the plate uh, before you leave. Uh, we certainly appreciate that. Let the rest of you faithful and giving. That's everything. Yep. Tonight, uh, six o'clock, the Tab family are going to be down at Clover Free Will Baptist. Y'all remember the Clover Choir that comes up to our tent, tent meeting and all that? It's that church. They're going to be down there at 6 o'clock. Uh, just, I mean, it's just not very far into Clover at all. Uh, right off the main street, right near the Piggly Wiggly uh, down at, uh, in Clover. Uh, it, you could be there from right here in probably less than 30 minutes of traffic, right? Uh, so it'd be a good thing to do, 6 o'clock tonight. They, they've been having revival. Now, I'm afraid to tell you this because they had revival Friday night, Saturday night. Both of those services lasted about two and a half hours. Uh, just absolutely God is meeting with those. And so tonight, uh, they're going to be uh, there at 6 o'clock having revival uh, one more night. So uh, if you can be at that, it'd be a great place to go. All right, let's have a word of prayer as we're dismissed. And uh, ask if you will, um, Brother uh, Jay, you stand up and you pray for us. Heavenly Father, we love you and thank you so much for this day, for all that you've blessed us with, Father. Lord, we thank you for this time and this opportunity just to be together in your house of worship this morning, Father. We thank you for the service that we had. I pray, Father, that you help us, Lord, to take all these words that we've heard this morning and apply them to our hearts and lives so we might grow stronger in you. I pray you give us all to our separate ways. Lead God and protect us, and we'll give you the praise, honor, and glory for all you do in Jesus' name. Amen.